I've noticed a recent change to open field fighting mechanics in Rise of Kingdoms that might contribute to making Yi Song Ye obsolete what's going on guys cheers we got an iced vanilla latte today all right we've got a lot to talk about here in this video okay and we're gonna go over the update to the open field mechanics that i just mentioned but there's also a couple of other things i want to cover mainly how Boudica prime is going to be in the game in just a couple of days and how that also might affect how many people use Isong A in the future. And finally, we'll talk about this mail that came out. That's actually really bad for free to play players looking to get their hands on some crystals in season of conquest. But first let's talk about Isong A. He is one of the first legendary commanders that gets introduced into a new kingdom. And he is widely regarded as one of the most important legendary commanders to expertise. The reason for this is because of his relatively unique circular AOE dealing a ton of skill damage of 1700 on top of the 50% percent skill damage boost that he gives to not only himself but the other commander that he might be paired with and there's a little bit of rage engine here as well and they also gave him a little bit of a buff with his relic which was very much appreciated but the main thing is that circular aoe that's what everybody talks about when they talk about Yi song Ye. they don't talk about how he's an archer commander because mainly we don't really care about that right alexander is a great primary for Isong A and he's infantry. You can use all infantry. It doesn't matter. And the reason that the circular AOE is so good in the open field is because you do not need to have any precision with the direction that your commanders are facing when you're dealing skill damage. Just anybody who happens to be even close to your army will get hit by that circular AOE. This is essentially free damage you are getting free damage on armies that are just nearby without doing anything additional you don't have to focus on them you don't have to even think about trying to hit them you will just simply get that extra damage on the enemy simply by them being nearby when your skill shot goes off but during the kvk that i'm in right now a lot of us noticed a little bit of a difference in how open field fighting was working and i don't know if it's because we're in the heroic anthem power up game mode i don't know if this is a bug if this is in intentional or what what the case might be here but while I was in a voice chat with the others in my alliance we started to talk about this change that we noticed and that was how your commanders behave when piling up on top of a specific target so what do I mean by this well if we take my four armies and we attack this level 49 you'll notice that as they walk towards that target they are all piled on top of one another and then as they start to hit that target they start to fan out however what you'll notice is they're not fanning out they're not doing anything at all my armies are standing directly on top of each other and no matter what aoe pattern they have you can see they are all overlapping in the center i have in these four armies isong ye mehmed william and ethelfled and they have four different aoe patterns in the open field but because all of my armies are literally standing on top of one another they are all firing their aoe directly straight ahead and it's not a fluke this isn't like a bug it's not a one-time thing you can see that no matter which target i am focusing as long as i select all of my units and direct them at a single target they will continue to pile on top of each other and fight in that arrangement now again if you guys are familiar with open field fighting you will know that this has not always been the case okay this is not how open field fighting used to always work it used to be the case that once your armies arrived at the target that they started fighting they would start to fan out in in a certain amount of area and that made it a little bit more difficult to control the direction of your aoe for example if you're using Mehmed or william they have a very tight aoe area and so if you wanted to focus on a particular army and then try and hit somebody else within that aoe area it was actually really difficult because you didn't really know how your armies were going to fan out once they reached the target that you were focusing on but now it looks to be the case that and again i don't know if this is a bug if lilith, lilith intended to do this or when this change even took place but it appears to be that all of your armies no longer fan out at all they do no adjustments with how they're fighting and i know that right now i'm fighting barbarians but this applies in pvp scenarios as well this applies in all open field fighting scenarios and the reason that this is important for pvp as well is because typically what you do when you're open field fighting is you identify the weakest target in a murder ball and you send all of your armies at that one target that's you know obviously you want to get the most amount of value 
out of the damage that you're dealing so what does this mean for Lee Song Ye well now it means that his circular AoE is still incredibly good but it's not as useful as it was before because now you have a little bit more control over the direction of your AoE meaning if you have a commander like let's say Nebu for example who also has a very powerful AoE except it's in a cone shape instead of a circular shape now you know that depending on which target you're focusing on and what direction you're walking from you sort of have control over exactly where that aoe is going to go now of course in pvp scenarios the uh, target's probably going to be moving or walking or whatever the case might be barbarians aren't really, aren't exactly a perfect re representation of this but what i found in this kvk and what others have found is that when you're using commanders such as mehmed for example he's actually way more effective now because even though his circ or his cone aoe is much um is much more narrow than the other cone aoe's in the game you still have a little bit more control over where that damage is going and that's very very good now this change alone is not enough to make isong ye obsolete because again just the fact that nearby armies will take damage from him is very good it's free damage you don't have to think about it you don't have to control anything you just get it for free but the other thing that is sort of putting isong ye you know one foot in the grave so to speak and and I'll, i'm going to come back to this we're going to talk about whether or not i think you should invest in isong ye in in 2022 but the other thing that's really threatening isong ye's position in the game is Boudica, right and Boudica is not a circular aoe commander and i thought a couple of like maybe a month or two ago um when we started to anticipate what the next archers were going to be right we saw cpo we knew he was going to be op he was going to be just as op as nevsky okay we thought all right what's an op archer look like i thought Boudica or whatever the archer would be would have some sort of circular aoe and that it was going to replace isong ye it turns out that Boudica and uh, henry do not have circular aoe Thutmose doesn't even have circular aoe okay um and, and so my assumption there was wrong however i still think that Boudica could replace isong ye in the open field if you have another commander to pair with her that's also dealing aoe such as nebuchadnezzar so what i'm thinking is that a Boudica primary nebu secondary may start to replace isong ye as the primary archer march for a lot of players who've been playing for a long time why do i say this okay if you look at isong ye's kit you look at what he's doing right it's very vanilla compared to what the new commanders are doing there's not that much here again i understand his circular aoe is exceptionally good okay it's very good your rage regeneration is good the archer attack is decent uh and the 50 percent skill damage bonus is also very very good his third skill though you're not getting any value from that in the open field but if you look at Boudica, okay you're dealing a mega a mega pint of damage to a single target with the 2300 okay you're also making them take 35 percent more skill damage and that is going to be in, a, in effect when your secondary commander launches their skill attack now does that mean that you can have isong a secondary to Boudica and get best of both worlds absolutely however if you look at nebu I feel like Nebu's kit in general is a little bit better from a trades perspective, right? So of course Nebu doesn't have circular AOE, so you're giving up that benefit, but he's a lot harder to swarm down in the open field because he has the 30% defense and Nebu also has, I think it's 15% increased archer damage. Yeah, his fourth skill is just flat. 15% more damage and a target rage reduction. So when you consider the amount of damage you're going to be dealing to a single target with Boudica on top of all of the tankiness AOE and just raw 15% damage you get from Nebu that actually might be a better pair than Boudica YSG right just from a a general well-rounded kit perspective and again I know you're missing the circular AOE and that's what makes YSG so good but from a from a a more well-rounded kit perspective I think Boudica Nebu might be the better play why is this because Boudica is giving you 30% archer attack all the time whereas for YSG he gives you a hundred percent archer attack but only for three seconds if it pops plus you get the extra defense bonus with Boudica and her expertise gives you 10% increased damage to archers 
on top of the 15% you would get if you have Nebu as well. She also has the chance, an 80% chance by the way, to remove control effects, which include the silence you would get from Guan Yu. And it, there's so many reasons, and that's not even touching on the healing factor and the skill damage taken reduction. There's a lot to love about Budoka, okay? And it's no secret that she is going to be game changing when she comes into the game. But unlike YSG, all four of her skills do something in the open field. That is maximum amount of value for an open field commander so it's no question that Boudica is going to be used uh, in, very very effectively in the open field the, the real question is who should be secondary to her should it be Nebu should it be YSG who should be secondary to Boudica and that is the question and then I think a lot of players are probably going to opt for Nebu over YSG because Nebu has a more well-rounded kit that makes him a little bit harder to swarm down and sure you're losing out on that circular AoE but you're gaining a lot else including 15% extra damage on top of the fact that we've now noticed this change in the open field mechanics you now can control more or less with more uh, precision I would say where your skill shots are going and in a hectic crazy open field murder ball and with the lag there's probably going to be times where it's still very difficult to control and that's why the circular aoe on ysg is just so legendary okay but i think right now more than ever is the moment where people are going to start replacing ysg i just think with nebu with Boudica, with henry these are this is the moment in time where players are start to really going to consider should we replace ysg and i think one thing that might be interesting is do they use him in their secondary archer march right do people start to run more than one archer march even if they're not an archer main just so they can get that circular aoe into the mix i think that's going to be really interesting to see what ysg's uh, role is moving forward am i wrong here are people going to use Boudica ysg over nebu because he's just got that circular aoe and it's just been so good for so long people aren't even going to question it right there's a lot to think about here and it's something that i i wanted to bring to your attention because with the open field movement change i think that's going to play a nice role also I found on top of that that it's easier to hit with my William AoE and it's easier to hit with my meds AoE and one thing I've noticed is a lot of players are using CPO primary with Mehmed secondary because it's just so so powerful you're getting the relic bonus from Mehmed plus his AoE plus his attack plus a skill damage damage bonus there's a lot of synergy with CPO Mehmed and you're getting more troops in the open field with Mehmed's capacity bonus and again with this change to how your army stack up it's going to be really interesting to see if if this is a bug or if Lilith changes this or if this is the future of how we're going to be fighting in the open field and what changes that could bring to how people choose commander pairs okay next let's talk about the nerf that happened to the amount of crystals you're getting from the trial of ko karak event guys i talked i just made a video i feel like i just made a video tell, telling lilith that they did a good job with the trial of ko karak and how many crystals you got right and in that video i said please do not nerf it and what do they do they claim it's a bug okay they claim it's a bug and look maybe that's the case but it seems to be and from what i'm seeing right now there has been a big change in the number of crystals that you get from the easy mode of trial of ko karak that's what it seems to be to me okay so let me share with you a couple of screenshots this is the first one this is the level 30 completion rewards for the trial of the ko karak now after they've released that update and you can see here that they got 150,000 crystals and this used to not be the case also shout out to nq for sharing this on asbodian's discord i appreciate that now shout out to legend roni for actually documenting this but level 30 of easy mode used to give you 11 of the 150,000 crystals and now it only gives you one that is a massive nerf okay that is 1.5 million crystals that players will no longer be getting from the trial of ko karak and those are some of the most important crystals in kvk because you get them right at the beginning of the game right before any fighting happens or anything like that it used to be the case that the easy mode gave you 2.68 million crystals now it looks like it will give you 1.18 million crystals crystals so effectively cutting it in half or more that's a huge change now I will say that Lilith has called this a bug meaning that you weren't supposed to get 
11 of the 150,000 tokens. And I guess this sort of makes sense. Okay. Again, I'm referencing legend Roni's video here, but if you look at the total number of crystals that you would obtain from this event, uh, it looks like you would get more crystals from easy mode than you would for the nightmare mode, which, you know, it doesn't really make much sense, but also you have to consider hard mode would give you more than double you would get from hell mode. So from a pers from the perspective of like difficulty compared to rewards, it didn't really ever line up. So I can understand why this might have been a bug, meaning they didn't mean to give you a ton of crystals for easy mode more so than nightmare mode right um so from a logical perspective i can understand how this might have been a bug however i will say that crystals in the early game are more important than crystals in the later game so what i'm saying is 1.5 million crystals at the beginning of kvk is way more useful than 1.5 million crystals at the end of kvk and that's why i thought or my assumption was that that's why they gave you a ton of crystals earlier on, despite it being an easier difficulty, because these crystals near the end of KVK aren't as important. Okay. So that is sort of the thing that they've changed here. I am very disappointed in this. Okay. Whether this was a bug or not, I was very happy with the number of crystals that players were getting because these were crystals that you could get free to play. So by changing this from 11 down to one, <laughs> okay. Reducing the rewards for level 30 by like 90%. Really this, uh, this just hurts free to play players, right? Because, um, you know, you could say like giving away this many crystals for free, uh, isn't good for Lilith's bottom line. They're not going to make as much money off of bundles and things like that, but that's not true. Okay. Immediately we can debunk that because I can say from firsthand experience that even when pass four opened, we were going up against people, a ton of people who already had max tech. Okay. So the whales are going to spend regardless. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to defend the whales in the comment section below. The whales are going to whale regardless. Okay. Um, so really this, uh, bug fix just hurts free to play players, which definitely sucks because I mean, let me, let me ask you this. What was the last time that an update hurt a whale? And what was the last time they fixed a bug that actually hurt the whale players? Yep. Yeah. Zero times it's happened zero times, right? Because if it's a bug that benefits whales, they'll leave it in the game. So that's just my speculation. I'm disappointed with this change, whether it was a bug or not. I still prefer the previous way. That's just me. The best part about this is that when players reached out to support talking about this, they asked if there would be compensation because now players are getting less rewards than they expected. And the answer is no, you will not get compensation for this because it is a bug fix again very disappointing in my opinion but i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below now just to wrap up the video i want to put my final thoughts into ysg okay do i think you should expertise ysg in 2022 yes dude a hundred percent okay because at the end of the day when you compare him to nebu you compare him to artemisia you compare him to other aoe commanders that are archers in the game okay he is actually a wheel of fortune commander that you can start to work on at the beginning of the game and the timing matters. Okay. The timing matters and whether you get Nebu or whoever else that you want to pair with Boudica at the end of the game, um, if you don't have any of them, YSG is still going to be a great choice. Okay. Boudica YSG is going to be incredible in the open field. We already know she's going to be insane. Okay. And YSG has always been insane. So regardless i think ysg if you've invested in him is a great investment that has never changed okay i'm talking to players who have been playing forever and have other options available should they replace ysg the question is up in the air but i think if they were ever going to then now would be the most probable time that that would actually occur. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below. Let me know what you think about the crystal changes for Kokurok. Let me know what you think about YSG while you're down there. Like the video, it helps the video out a ton. It helps get it out into the YouTube algorithm. So otherwise the kingdoms players might see it. Also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I think uh, like over 50% of you guys are not subscribed. So go ahead and click that button. Click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.